Hi everybody, I'm Mark, the creator of the NYX Tracker, and in this video I'm going to compare the NYX Tracker to a few other star tracking options that are currently on the market. I want to preface this video by saying that I'm not attempting to bash these trackers. These are great trackers. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. I hope I'm going to give a pretty objective, honest uh, comparison here so that you can understand which product might be the best for you. My mission in building the NYX Tracker, which is a hobby of mine, is simply to provide people with more options to get into astrophotography. It can be an expensive hobby, and before investing you know, $1,000 in a camera and a lens and a mount, uh, you can buy something a little bit cheaper to give you a taste for it to see if you like it. Okay? Well, with that said, uh, each of these have their advantages and disadvantages, like I said, and let's start with going over the Fornax. Now, this is a very old version of the Fornax Lifetrack 2, but it's quite similar in size and capability, so I'm going to use it uh, to compare. The Fornax Lifetrack 2, if you buy it right now, uh, is uh, going for about 610 US dollars, and it boasts a very impressive one arc second of periodic error. That's every eight minutes, so that's a very long cycle time, and that's a very low periodic error. The mount is a bit larger, um, but that's what you have to do in order to get that kind of periodic error. And the reason for that is they use something called a friction drive. Okay, That's the mechanism that causes the mount to rotate and track the stars. Basically what it is, is this edge right here has been machined with some precision in relation to the axis of rotation. And then with friction, um, it, Basically, some sort of spring device or preloading device loads a bearing against this surface, and just by friction it moves, okay? So there's no slop, there's no play, and it ends up being very precise. So I believe their one second periodic error claim, and if you go on the internet, a lot of people are showing their worst periodic error with this mount to be about three arc seconds, so that's very good. It's heavy, it's a little bit less transportable, you will absolutely need to align with the polar scope and you're also going to need an external battery pack. So again, this has a, a very high performance mount. It's pricier at $610, but if you're into fat, uh, astrophotography and you know you've committed to it and you want to be doing it for years to come, this is a good option for you. Okay. The next is the Star Adventure. It is quite portable and it's quite small. This is the photo package. The Astro package uh, runs you a, manu a suggested uh, retail price of about $330 currently. Okay? It runs on four AA batteries. It's got a bunch of speed settings, just like the Fornax. So there's the celestial tracking, in other words, the stars. Then there's solar, lunar, and then for time-lapse stuff, there's another four or five options. So it's, it's got a good feature set. Okay? It's solidly built. It has a pretty good payload capacity. You can put uh, two cameras on here with the right adapter plate. That's one thing to note. You will have to buy adapter plates if you want to use the astro photography options on this to their fullest. So uh, you align this similarly to the way you align this. It comes with an illuminated reticle for getting you close to um, the celestial pole, but you'll have to align it with this scope. Now, this makes one of the common complaints with this type of alignment mechanism is that you have to remove your camera in order to use it. Okay, so if we remove the head here, excuse me, if we remove the head here, that's the site down which the polar scope views. So, in other words, you're going to have to have a very sturdy tripod in order to make use of this because if you align it and then you interact with the mount, moving it around a bunch while you put on your camera, you're going to misalign it if you're on anything but the sturdiest of tripods. Okay? So, just keep that in mind. It's a great mount. It's got quite good periodic error of about 40 arc seconds is what most people are getting out in the field. Okay? So 40 arc seconds compared to one arc second. This is bigger, heavier, takes more time to set up, but it's got much better performance. It's also pricier. But, I like this guy. It's a good one. And a lot of people tend to like it as well. 
All right, moving on, we got the Polari Vixen Tracker. Now again, this is a nice product, very good finish. You can tell it's uh, been very well engineered by professionals. Um, it's got speed settings, just like all the other trackers on this table, and it aligns in very much the same way as the Star Adventure. You have to take off this back piece here, and you have to buy a separate scope to align. I'm not going to take that piece off, but you get the idea. If you want to rough align it, it's got this bore sight here, okay? So for all of these mounts, they use scopes to accurately align, which you will get very good alignment if you do it correctly. But they are kind of a hassle. You're going to have to get down on your knees, you're going to have to look through it at the uh, celestial pole, etc., etc. I seem to have misplaced the collet on that uh, mounts here, and that's where you put the camera on. So again, with this tracker, the Polari Vixen, you're going to have to have an incredibly stable tripod because you have to do all of your alignment before you mount the camera to it, which can be an issue. I've talked to a lot of people that have used this guy, and they have a hard time getting periodic error better than about 50 arc seconds, and that's, that's best case scenario, okay? So just something to keep in mind. It's a good product. It's nice. It's compact. It's not the lightest thing out there, but it's, it's pretty good. It's powered on AA batteries, um, just like the Star Adventure is. And it runs, I think, at $399 is the suggested retail price. Again, another good option. So, last, but hopefully not least in a number of ways, is the NYX Tracker. This is my creation. This is something I do as a hobby. And again, my goal here is just to provide another option. The NYX Tracker is the smallest out of all of these. It's the least volume, it's the lightest by far, so it's the most portable in my opinion. It's very rugged, you can, you know, it's durable. You're not, you don't have to worry about things getting damaged. You can throw this in a backpack and it'll be just fine. In fact, I designed this with backpacking in mind. I like to go into the mountains and enjoy nature, so I want to be able to take a tracking mount without adding five pounds to my backpack. The next tracker will come with a ball head unless you choose the option to not have a ball head. So that's um, that's $129 with a, with a ball head. So most of these other guys, you're going to have to buy a ball head in addition to the tracker that can run you anywhere from $20 to $40 or $50. Just something to keep in mind. Now, one thing that really sets the next tracker apart from every every other tracker on this table is the method of alignment. You can always Take these trackers and put your own uh, scopes on them, your own red dot uh, reticles or anything like that. But the NYX tracker comes with a laser. Okay, this laser sh uh, aim will will tell you exactly where the axis of rotation is aimed. It's within about 0.2 degrees, which is very good for wide field. I would not suggest attempting to use the NYX tracker if you're tr using a heavier setup a very large camera with a long focal length. That's something that you're going to need uh, the Fornax for or the Star Adventure. You need something more stable, uh, something, something bigger basically. But this is a great option if you're doing wide field imagery about 100 millimeters focal length or less. You could push it out to 200 if you've got a pretty good setup and you've got some experience. But I recommend uh, anything up to 100 millimeter focal length with the NYX Tracker. It's the cheapest option on the table by about a factor of three. It also has a larger periodic error. 115 arc seconds is what I've been measuring with the latest, and honestly, I'm not going to be able to get it much better than that with the drive mechanism it employs. Okay, what the way that this is driven is by a threaded rod, and most of the periodic error comes from the motor, and that periodic error cycles about every two minutes. So if you keep your images to uh, 30 seconds or so, you can keep your periodic error to about half of that. So we're starting to get to the point where it compares with some of these other trackers, okay? We're in the same range. Now when people b make their own barn door trackers, that's the type of tracker that the NYX tracker is, when people make their barn own barn door trackers, they tend to have periodic error more like 300 or 400 arc seconds. So it's okay for wide field if you make your own barn door tracker, but if you want to shoot longer or you want to shoot a little deeper with your focal length, you're going to want to look at either the NYX tracker with a lower periodic error than one you could build on your own, 
or one of these other options with much lower periodic error. Okay, so I think that kind of covers it. Um, each of these trackers have their advantages and disadvantages. The NYX tracker is cheap. It has still fairly good periodic error for wide field astrophotography. It has a very easy alignment method with the laser. Polari Vixen, nice, stable, very finished. It's a beautiful product. Star Adventure gets a little bit better periodic error. And then, of course, for a high performance, you're going to look at the Fornax light track mounts, which are an excellent product. And one day, I'm sure I will purchase one. This one's my coworkers. Okay, thank you guys.